Welcome to Empty Suitcase with our Chef Flamingos, a podcast featuring honest conversations around productivity, creativity, and agility for those working in and navigating the digital space. So that's basically everyone these days. In part one of this episode, we spoke about Suja's aim to provide change agents with the best holistic approach towards health, fitness, and wellness in order to maximize their performance and longevity. The better these human beings perform, and the longer they're able to do it for, the higher impact they will have within their mission and vision spectrum. In this part of the episode, Sujay will take you through the science and physiology behind meditation, followed by a short guided meditation for all our listeners. Great, let's get started then. Let's begin by understanding a little bit about the science and physiology of breathing. I find that it helps a lot to understand a concept behind any practice, especially if it has something to do with nutrition or burning fat or building strength or breath work for that matter. It makes it much easier to to take those directions, to implement that practice and to perhaps even make it a habit, a part of your lifestyle. So breath work is basically pranayam practices they have existed for thousands of years. With breathwork, it's repackaged so that it's more easily accessible. For the most part, we use simple rates and ratios. We don't worry too much about whether we're sitting in Padmasana, for example, or not. We use English terms instead of Sanskrit ones because it's easier for most people to understand, pronounce, and to remember. For example, we use alternate nostril breathing instead of Nadi Shodhana. Breathwork is one of the only techniques that's easily accessible and safe through which we can almost immediately affect our heart rate, digestion, blood oxygen level, blood pressure, blood pH level, which is the alkalinity or the acidity of your blood. And in turn, we can then control our energy levels, our mood, emotions as well. As with pranayam practices, breathwork too has a lot to do with the manipulation of levels of carbon dioxide in the body. So let's begin then by understanding the role that CO2 or carbon dioxide plays. For the most part, we have been taught, I certainly was, that carbon dioxide is a toxic gas and that it's really bad for us. This is true, but there is more to it than that. Carbon dioxide is also a vasodilator and a bronchodilator. Vasodilation means the opening up of veins. Bronchodilation is essentially the opening up of your breathing passageways. What happens when veins open up? There's more blood flow. What's in the blood? Hemoglobin. Hemoglobin carries oxygen. So through temporary retention of carbon dioxide, we are easing blood flow within the body, which is then allowing red blood cells of hemoglobin to release the oxygen that it's carrying throughout the system. As we know, higher concentrations of oxygen in the cells, tissues, heart, brain is not just good for our health, but it's also great for improving our performance. Now, understanding the concept that we require carbon dioxide for better uptake of oxygen is an integral part of understanding how breath work functions. So let's let's look at this from a non-scientific uh, perspective for a second. Imagine there's been an accident. Nobody's really physically hurt but people are in a state of panic when the paramedics arrive or even pilots in fact are trained to do this they immediately realize that no one's physically hurt but people are panicking so what they do is they give the person who is panicking usually a brown paper bag to put either over their heads or to breathe into there's nothing magical about the paper bag itself it's just that the person is encouraged to breathe in and they're recycling their own carbon dioxide by breathing into and out of the bag This encourages vasodilation. It increases the uptake of oxygen. The person goes from breathing fast and in the chest region to breathing much more slowly and from breathe deeper down. You can you can visibly you can you can see it go from (sighs) to that. So essentially what's happened is the utilization, the retention of carbon dioxide has enabled this person from to go from being in a panicked state to a much more relaxed state. Now that we have touched upon the role of CO2 a little bit, let's look at the role that the vagus nerve plays. 
The vagus nerve and the autonomic nervous system. The autonomic nervous system is essentially like the respiratory nervous system, the reproductive nervous system, or the digestive nervous system. It's another system that governs the functioning of our bodies. As the name suggests, autonomic, it consists of the functions that occur automatically in our body, such as our heartbeat, digestion, uh, breathing even. We don't consciously tell our hearts to beat. We don't consciously tell our ourselves to breathe all day long. It happens automatically. Now, there are two main subsystems in the autonomic nervous system. One is the sympathetic nervous system. The other one is the parasympathetic nervous system. With the sympathetic nervous system, it is related to fight or flight response that our bodies switch to when we need to concentrate or protect ourselves or take action. The parasympathetic nervous system is linked to rest and digest. A response that our bodies switch to when we are ready to relax, recover, repair, or even go to sleep eventually. Now, why is this important? Because when we do deep diaphragmatic breathing, as opposed to shallow chest breathing, and we cut the rate of our breathing down, we essentially are stimulating this vagus nerve. The vagus nerve runs from, it's rooted in the brain, and it runs from the middle of the brain almost, through the diaphragm, into the small intestine, to all organs of the body. Essentially, by massaging this nerve through deep diaphragmatic breathing, we are upregulating a parasympathetic response, that is, rest, digest, which then allows us to drop our heart rate, lower blood pressure, rest, digest, recover, and eventually fall asleep. Now, having understood the role of CO2 and the vagus nerve and the autonomic nervous system, let's now look at the, main, the three main categories of breathing practices. They are organized into these categories based primarily on the rates and the ratios of breathing. Reasonably healthy adults, you and me are probably, if we're sitting down and in a relaxed state, we are breathing at a rate of approximately 9 to 14 times a minute. And the first category of breathing is coffee breathing, wherein we increase the rate of breathing to approximately 30 or 60 times a minute. What this does is it causes vasoconstriction. This has the opposite effect of inducing relaxation. It, it lets your body know that something important is about to happen. Wake up, it's a matter of survival. Be alert, concentrate. Like coffee, really, which is, by the way, a vasoconstrictor. Coffee breathing, just like you would drink coffee in the morning or, you know, when you need to wake up, not particularly after 5 p.m. or so. Similarly, we practice coffee breathing before physical activity. I personally sometimes use it when I'm behind the wheel and I'm feeling a little bit sleepy. We use this just like coffee in moderation. Then there's water breathing, which is the main category of breathing that we focus a great deal on. We cut the rate down from, as I mentioned, 9 to 14 times a minute to approximately 6 breaths a minute while using deep diaphragmatic breathing as well. This essentially, again, massages the vagus nerve, up, it upregulates a parasympathetic response allowing us to reduce heart rate, blood pressure and so on. It also helps us find a great deal of balance and just like you would drink water at any time of the day or night, this is a practice that can be utilized at any time of the day or night. We use this practice more than any other category because it brings about a sense of balance. It helps a great deal with meditation as well. Mindful meditation is the most commonly practiced form of meditation. It's also the most effective. And in mindful meditation, we are essentially being mindful about our breath. So we use a water breathing practice a lot through this. Lastly, we have the whiskey breathing method, wherein we cut the heart rate, uh, sorry, the breathing rate down even further to approximately four times a minute or even lower than that. This works similarly to water breathing, but it allows us to drop our heart rate further down. It aids in helping us wind down after a long day or, or after intense physical activity. It basically enhances the process of going to a deeper state of sleep more quickly. Again, just like you would perhaps drink a glass of whiskey late in the evening or at night to wind down and to help you eventually fall asleep, this is how we use it in small quantities as well. In fact, this is a breathing method that I personally also use while I'm lying down in bed. Last thing I do after I turn the lights out is practice this form of breathing because it does help me definitely fall asleep much more quickly. So now that we've discussed 
quite a bit <laughs> about the science and the physiology of breathing. Let us move on into actually practicing it. Let's let's do a breathwork and meditation session together. Let us begin by finding ourselves a nice comfortable seat, someplace quiet, peaceful. If you do choose to sit down on the floor or on a mat, I would highly recommend sliding something underneath your butt so that your leg doesn't fall asleep and this also helps you straighten up your back. And most of us aren't used to sitting on the floor for more than a few minutes at a time, so that's why I'm suggesting this. If you are choosing to sit on either a couch or a chair, I recommend sliding slightly out in front so that we're not using the backrest. We want to keep our spine straight, erect, alert. This is a way of focusing and finding concentration and also ensuring that we don't by mistake fall asleep. Right. So once we found a comfortable seat, we can place our palms down, facing down on the knees or on the upper thighs. We either place our palms facing up or down. When we place our palms facing up, that generally means that we are ready to receive knowledge. And we, when we place our palms facing down, that means we're ready to go inwards. Given that we're going inwards here, palms down, eyes closed, straight back, shoulders slightly rolled back. This automatically opens up your chest a little bit. Chin parallel to the floor, jaws relaxed, eyelids lightly closed. It's okay if a little bit of light goes through. Relax your forehead. We'll begin by becoming aware of every single square inch or centimeter of your body that is in contact with the floor or whatever it is you're sitting on. We'll move that awareness now to our fingertips, all 10 fingertips. Shift that awareness now to your right ankle. Shift that awareness now to your left elbow. We'll move that awareness to the entirety of the spine from the bottom all the way up to the top. Each and every single vertebra become aware. Move that awareness now to your right shoulder. We'll move that awareness now to the tip of the nostril and from here we'll start following our breath as it enters from the tip of the nostril and makes it its way into our bodies. Become aware now of where you feel the expansion on the inhale. Do you feel the expansion primarily in the chest, primarily below the belly button? Do you feel it above the belly button in the midsection? See where the contraction is as you exhale. Start to become aware and notice where this contraction happens as we exhale. Gently, wherever this contraction and expansion is happening, we're going to guide the air so that it settles down first in the base, in the lower portion, below the belly button. Feel the expansion below the belly button. Feel the expansion near the lower back. And we'll begin each exhalation with a slight contraction of the pelvic floor or the mola darabandha. It's a very subtle, gentle contraction which begins each exhale. So we're consciously breathing in 
and guiding the air to settle first down at the base, below the belly button, feeling the expansion. Each exhale begins with a slight contraction of the lower pelvic floor and the lower abdominal muscles, which then guides the air upwards into the chest, collarbones and out of the nose. Now that we have consciously managed to guide that air first down into the base, we're going to start visualizing the air entering from the tip of the nostril, making its way to the back of the throat and then guiding it down to settle down in the base. Expansion happens in the lower portion of the belly. Each exhalation begins with a slight contraction, subtle contraction of that pelvic floor which guides the air upwards into the chest, collarbones and out of the tip of the nostril. At this point, we're ready to start slightly elongating both the inhale as well as the exhale. So over the next five to 10 breaths, I want you to gently elongate the inhale and the exhale by about 15 to 25%. while continuing to visualize each breath entering from the tip of the nostril, making its way to the back of the throat. You're then guiding it to settle down in the base, feeling the expansion in the lower portion of the belly. As you increase the volume of the inhale, you can then feel the expansion rise up from the lower portion of the belly into the midsection and then up into the chest. At the very end of the inhale, a gentle contraction of the lower pelvic region is what initiates the exhale, which is guided upwards from the mid belly into the chest, collarbones, eventually out of the tip of the nostril. Staying with the breath, staying with the visualization, and staying with the conscious contractions and expansions. What we'll do next is we'll start to breathe together, keeping a count, which I will help you with. We will even the inhale and the exhale. So while I count, I want you to continue staying focused on consciously guiding the air first to the base on the inhale subtle contractions of the lower pelvic floor on the exhale and I want you to follow the entire journey that the air makes from the tip of the nostril on the inhale eventually coming out of the tip of the nostril on the exhale so we'll begin to breathe together on zero we'll inhale I'll count down from five four three inhale on zero Two, one, zero, inhale, one, two, three, four, exhale, four, three, two, one, inhale, one, two, three, four, exhale, four, three, two, one, inhale, one, two, three, four, exhale, four, three, two, one, inhale, one, two, three, four, exhale, four, three, two, one, inhale, one, two, three, four, exhale, four, three, two, one, inhale, one, two, three, four, exhale, four, three, two, one, inhale, one, two, three, four, exhale, four, three, two, one, inhale, one, two, three, four, exhale, four, three, two, one, inhale, one, two, three, four, exhale, four, three, two, one, inhale, one, two, three, 
फोर एक्सेल फोर थ्री टू वन इनहेल वन टू थ्री फोर एक्सेल फोर थ्री टू वन इनहेल वन टू थ्री फोर एक्सेल फोर थ्री टू वन इनहेल वन टू थ्री फोर एक्सेल फोर थ्री टू वन कंटिन्यू कीपिंग द काउंट इन योर हेड वाइल कीपिंग द काउंट continue to stay with the visualization visualize the entire journey in as much detail as you can guide the air first from the tip, the tip of the nostril to the back of the throat from there all the way down to the base let it settle down expansion of the lower portion of the belly sides lower back that expansion rises up into the mid belly chest collarbones each exhalation then begins with a subtle gentle almost imperceptible contraction of the lower pelvic floor which then guides the air up into the belly rib cage chest collarbones back of the throat and out of the tip of the nostril continue staying with the visualization if the mind goes anywhere at all gently gently bring it back to the count bring it back to the journey that the air is making bring it back to the conscious contractions and expansions stay with the visualization remember we're trying to settle into a space with the count wherein it's not too easy and it's not so difficult that we're fighting with ourselves at any point if you feel like you're fighting with yourself then take a step back reduce the count by one count if you're at a 5 or a 4 you can come down to a 4 or a 3 If you're comfortable where you are, then find that nice rhythm, find that nice smooth transition between the inhale and the exhale. again if the mind has wandered anyway gently bring it back and over the next few breaths you can slowly start to let go of the count let go of the visualization keeping your eyes closed let go of the conscious contractions and expansions and simply at this point become aware become the observer of the air coming and going we will move all this focus and concentration that we've built up this awareness that we've built up to that one spot between the eyebrows and above the nose between the eyebrows and above the nose we'll retain all our focus there as we watch as we observe the air coming and going when you're ready you can gently bow your head and open your eyes with a few blinks thank you very much for taking part in this breath work this meditation with me i uh, hope you had a fantastic time thank you <laughs>